Hello, welcome to a Gibbs Cam demonstration from Midwest Cam. This presentation is for advanced high speed 3D machining. Um, I have a part opened up here and it's all programmed. We're going to review the uh, methods and strategies used. It's a very complicated blower housing type uh, prototype part. And um, we started out, I brought the model in, into the uh, lathe module and turned the profiler on and got the spun shape of this part because this is the stock we start from. We actually put this in a lathe and turn the uh, net round shape of this. Once the solid was built, we right clicked and you know set it for stock intelligence. So that's going to be my stock knowledge for the machining of it. Um, operation one here, we have a large inch and a half cutter and we're using the advanced pocketing core detection outside in, starting the top, going down to this level and to load in the depths, you just simply click and, you know, I'll click on a face and you can put the depths in. The steps, we tell it. Once you drop a tool in here, the responsibility of filling in all these blanks is very small because your stock, your steps, your type of machining, it's real easy just to adjust. You don't have to go and adjust each box. Automatic speeds and feeds for calculations from the material library for your speeds and feeds data. Um, we're asking for arcs, all G2s and 3s. Uh, we're doing constant step downs and we we're using a solid for the stock manage it, management which is adjusted automatically and it's a stock bounded box I'm going past by 50 thou. So when I hit my CPR, I'll rewind and stop, you know the tool lands outside the part all the time. And it's always going to go outside in roughing, you know never shroud in that tool. A high speed method, always round corner moves, never a sharp turn, uh, minimize lift offs, keeping the tool close to the part. And it also uses high feed, high feed for the positioning. So our cycle time report is the actual cut time. Um, op two here is a spiral contour. I'm using geometry extracted from the top face. Of course, we loaded the depths from the top, the surface to how deep we want to cut, a little 1,000 steps, leaving 10,000 stock. If I redo it, it does step cuts. And the high speed spiral, we just simply say ZRAM contour. This is pretty slick. It keeps the tool on the part and keeps it spiraling so we don't shock that tool come off and on that part and it can be for roughing or finishing in nice G2 2's and three 3's for the G-code keeps real smooth fast uh, smooth cuts second cut next cut here is taking a couple steps and finishing it this is doing a roughing in these cavity areas we have a half inch end mill and a quarter inch end mill the half inch end mill of course we're leaving stock uh, core detection outside and cutting and to do the uh, tool path with a smaller tool, we just dropped it behind, same parameters other than just a little smaller steps, and in the boundary mode, we just selected rest material. Rest material is machine material only machining, so that tool will only cut where it needs to. So the half inch end mill here we're watching cuts everywhere that it can, and the smaller quarter inch end mill comes in with you know 50,000 step downs, kind of whittling it down a little, little uh, tighter in the areas where this tool can get to. Um, operation six here is a spiral contour. What's nice about contouring, we can helically cut things where it just actually just spirals around the path part, the shapes you select, or you could turn helical off and go depth first. Now when I do turn this helical off, the connect move control, I got five degree angle, which is default. I'll redo it here so we can kind of see the differences. It goes to the task manager, which allows me to keep working on my computer if I'd like and add more ops and it keeps queuing them and putting them in. Um, works great with the quad processor. You could have four things calculated at the same time. Now, the uh, short, shortest uh, connect move is going around one level at a time, moves down, goes around, comes down, and it keeps snelling this five degree angle all the way around this little spud here. So you do have the options for helical or depth first with the click of the button and uh, use the method that best suits the need. Um, operation 7 here is doing a, a, a contour where it's snelling and keeping it on. It's a semi-finished cut. Operation 8 is doing intersection rest material. Now intersection rest machining is like a material only corner cleanup that works based on your reference tool size. My last tool was a quarter inch. I specified 255. Leaving a little stock doing Z and step over is the same and that's just going to do a semi finish outside in cutting in each area. It doesn't recognize this as a radius because there's like a little anomaly here in the solid. It's got some rimples and dimples in it here. Uh, it's kind of not blended right from the modeler. Um, 
but we took care of that with another process. Now, operation 9 here is doing a steep shallow cut where we have the logic of shallow areas and steep areas. It automatically defaults to numbers that work right out of the box. It'll kind of finish any mole cavity without any uh, complications. You have the Z step, which is a Z step, and a step over, which is a shallow area. Uh, it automatically trims the tool path to maintain the same smoothness on these surfaces. Op 10 is doing a contour in this area. I semi-finished it, and Operation 11 here is finishing this area. Now this is like a little dish area. It actually dips down in there. You can see it if I hide the toolpath or show you the background. The, uh, the area where it's near flat, we can use the adaptive step-downs. And the max profile difference change, if you turn balloons on, little notes come up in all these boxes, but the max profile difference, the maximum XY change in the surface profile between two adjacent Z levels, if I say if it moves more than Z, we'll do a 2,000 step down in those areas. And by doing this, when it gets down to the near flat areas, it does finer steps, finer cuts to actually finish those areas. Toolpath 12 is an intersection finish toolpath. And operation 13 is doing intersection machining with a small ball end mill, a 33,000 end mill. It's just going to rough out this little area where the variable radius is. I'm going to turn the CPR on and just let it render so we can watch it. Here's the, the core detection roughing, outside in roughing. We have color mode on, so we have some nice colors which you can adjust and easily uh, get the colors you like or let it randomly choose the ones it, it selects. And we're going around. Spiraled finished it, contour roughing, intersection rest material, uh, rest machining, spiral uh, contouring, nice G's, 2's, and 3's, smooth, fast code. We're doing a contour, uh, semi finish. Intersection rest machining now is semi finishing this area. Um, generally, we want to get the stock out of there, just leave a couple thousands. So when I finish this, it doesn't bang in here. I used a 188 ml to finish this, and we have 62 radiuses in here. Therefore, it allows me to machine faster with a 188 ml, and I'll come in and clean the intersection areas up with a 125 ball ml. So you can um, use these uh, strategies to benefit with tools that are better suited for you know faster cycle times and whatnot. And the cycle time on this, this part here, I can open up this dialog while it's still rendering here. We got a 53 minute cycle time. This allows me to go see which ops are the longest, so maybe we can improve something. But 19 minutes cut time is what this operation we're viewing here right now takes. This is the kind of the finishing op of the main cavity. And most of the cycle time is in this op. You'll notice when it cuts that it's gonna maybe take one path around the outside and then several passes on the shallower areas because the shallower areas requires more cutting than the steeper areas. And this is all automatic. I've really been enjoying the uh, steep shallow logic cutting uh, for mold cavities that are complicated because you don't have to detail them. It'll take care of all the complex shapes and finish it for you with semi-finishing or final finish machining. After this toolpath gets done, we just got some corner cleanup to do and we're pretty much done with all the bulk of the uh, machining in this complex mold cavity. Here's a little contour cut where we're semi-finishing this area where those anomalies were. And then the fine detail cut now that's doing the adaptive step-downs. So we're taking small little Z-steps, but when it gets to a shallow flat area, we're only going to do a 2000 Z-change like in this area right there, so it gets it really smooth. And then the next tool path now is intersection rest machining, where it's going to be finishing the, um, the uh, inside radius there where she can. It's going to go back and forth and pick it out. Now, of course, your step over amounts, uh, determining your smoothness required. Um, it uh, really gives you a nice smooth surface so you don't have to do uh, any buffing or whatnot. Well, it just kept keep rendering through. Uh, the file does render a little faster without this Camtasia video thing on, but uh, I want to make sure you can see the events and see what's happening here with this tool. And you can see a solid tool so it's easier to see the tool or a transparent tool up here. You can also see the runtime right here as it's cutting and it's calculating the times. Or you can show ops while she is displaying the uh, cutting tool paths. And each intersection rest material corner cleaning areas 
or one on and off with each area. It keeps that tool on, it goes back and forth, outside in roughing or finishing, uh, just like you like it to cut. After we get done with this area, we have one more little area that's going to jump to over in this area. And it's going to finish this area. Goes outside in roughing. And then the last area, there's a little variable blended radius on the bottom of this little post here. And that little 32,000 stem mill is going to go in there and finish that area. And there she goes. Pretty much completes the demonstration. I hope you enjoyed the little 3D advanced high speed machining presentation and uh, uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you and have a great day.